I'm sorry, I'm having some lighting issues here. Um, hope this works. And now there's like this glare on my glasses. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the Garden of Eden and the serpent and the fall of mankind. This is something that I think is really fascinating, but I've never heard people talk specifically about what I'm about to talk about. And everybody I've mentioned this to, they like always tell me, oh, I've never heard it taught that way. Okay, so this is just, these are just my thoughts. Okay, so hear me out and let me know what you think. And if you disagree, uh, I'd love to know what, what you think. Okay. <laughs> so um, we know that God created the earth. He created the universe, everything in it. And it was good. Everything was perfect. And God, last of all, made people. God made Adam from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, which I believe was spirit. But here's the thing. God made man in his own image. So God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let him have dominion over all the earth. That is huge. That is an amazing thing right there. Okay. Absolutely amazing. Okay. That God did that. The animals. Okay. So the animals are beneath us and they know they're beneath us. So God created. Now he, okay. Let me just get into this. This is Genesis, the third chapter. Okay. It says now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. I think some translations say crafty and or wise. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Because God told them, Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You can eat from any tree in the garden. So I guess every tree in the garden had fruit on it or something. I mean, that don't need to be hanging around the one tree. But anyway, okay. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, or apparently they were hanging out, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Your spiritual eyes, okay? And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Okay, so something that I want to point out. I, I It doesn't say anything about the serpent eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He knew that they were told that Adam and Eve were instructed by God do not eat from that tree or you will die. Now think about this. There were only two people, two people on the planet at that time. And they were together. They were husband and wife. Okay, they were together. Whole earth. And then there they were in the garden. Big deal here, okay? If the serpent... And it sounds to me, if he was the most subtle, the most craftiest of all the animals on the planet, think about that. It almost kind of sounds like the serpent was the top animal out of all the creatures. If he was made to be the most craftiest. God did that. God made, created him that way. It didn't just happen. It wasn't a surprise to God. Now, here's what I suspect. Because the serpent wanted so much for Adam and Eve to eat from that tree, 
and he convinced them that they wouldn't die, that actually they would become like God. He knew they were already like God. They were created in the image and likeness of God. But it seems like the serpent wanted Adam and Eve to die, possibly thinking that he would replace them as number one on the planet. Now, I know that probably sounds weird, but I mean, he wanted them so much to eat that, eat from the fruit. He said, no, no, don't believe God. I mean, come on. Every creature, everyone knew. Everyone knew. God is is the Almighty. God is the one. And he tells you to do something. It's right. It's the truth. Okay? But the serpent, you know, convinced Eve that God just doesn't want you to have uh, knowledge. He doesn't want you to be wise. He wants you to basically be dumb and ignorant. But he knows that if you eat from that tree... You will be wise. You'll, you'll be like God. Which is interesting because that was Lucifer's thing. He wanted to be like God. I'm going to raise my throne above the stars. He had a throne. And it was in the Garden of Eden. But we don't know the time frame. The Garden of Eden? We don't know the time frame of the fall of, uh, the fall of Lucifer and the fall of mankind. I do believe that the serpent was listening to either Satan or a demon or something. I believe that's where he got that motive from, that desire. But the, the thing is, the serpent knew they're number one, and there's only two of them. And I'm the craftiest of all the animals. So if they die, there's no more people on the earth. Well, who's second in line? Who is... Um, who is second? I think the serpent thought that if he could kill off mankind, because there was only two people, that he would become like God in doing that. And I, uh, you know, there's people in the world today, they think, oh, if we can just get rid of the majority of the population, then we'll be like God and we'll just take over and start over. It's a totally different uh, topic altogether, but... Isn't it interesting, though, that the serpent, if he really believed it, he would have wanted that tree for himself. I think he would have devoured the fruit on it and wouldn't have wanted anyone touching it. But he's just hanging out watching them eat. And it's interesting that the serpent is just, what, sitting there, standing there, watching Eve eat and then giving fruit to her husband, Adam, and then he's eating. I mean, what must the serpent have been thinking? watching these two eating knowing that god said they would die if they did so anyway this is just it's just something that i wanted to kind of throw out there because that's something that i i think is so fascinating and uh i know it really doesn't mean anything to us today but nevertheless i do think it's still an interesting story and i wonder if that was what was going on you know, kind of behind the scenes. So anyway, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. If you have any thoughts on it, feel free to leave a comment and let me know because uh, the Bible is just so interesting. There are so many like really wonderful stories, inspiring stories, um, so much to learn. But yeah, I mean, that's a, that's pretty interesting. So all right, I love you guys, and bye, uh, bye for now. <laughs>